The Central Asian Report is a program about the ongoing geopolitical trends and the panorama of the present-day realities in Central Asia. Politics, economics and culture, events, trends and people, all this on one territory. Hello, you're watching the Central Asian Report in today's program. Acceleration of EU activities in Central Asia. The agrarian backbone of Kazakhstan. Biometric technologies in Kyrgyzstan. The echo of festive Astana. For a long time, the European Union has maintained a relatively reserved strategy regarding Central Asia. Today, this is changing completely due to drastic changes on the global arena. EU's plans include making Central Asia one of the most important vectors of its geopolitics. Our correspondent found out what this new strategy entails. Europe and Asia are connected by long-standing economic and political ties. From the 90s, the European Union began establishing relations with each country of Central Asia, which had just become independent after the fall of the Soviet Union. The five countries of Central Asia are of great importance for the European Union, and uh, we have been having developing strategies since 2007, 2007 uh, between the European Union and Central Asia. However, during the eight years, the situation has radically changed. That is why the time has come to introduce some changes into the strategy. Lithuania, which is chairing the European Union Council this year, has said cooperation with Central Asia is one of its priorities. The growth tempos of Kazakhstan and countries of Central Asia are evidence to the fact that those tasks that were set in 2007 have been partially fulfilled and need to be reconsidered, taking into account that countries of Central Asia are now developing at different tempos and in different directions. On the agenda of the day is the discussion of the draft of a new strategy, which will have an individualized approach for each country, but which will take into consideration the common challenges that affect the entire region. During a roundtable at the Eurasian National University named after Gumilov, representatives of the EU and Central Asian countries were able to summarize the results of the work done on developing the strategy. It is important to note the working mechanism of a regular high-level dialogue within the Central Asian European Union format, to which Kazakhstan attaches great importance. The role of the European Union in addressing environmental problems of the region was noted, particularly assistance in preparing a convention on environmental protection for the stable development of the Caspian Sea. A precedent was set when before the legal status of the Caspian Sea, an environmental convention was put into force, which has taken on the format of a wide-scale cooperation in the sphere of environmental protection of the Caspian Sea. Representatives of Central Asian countries also expressed their opinions and proposals on the formation of a new EU strategy in the region. Some of the priority aims of Kazakhstan are diversification of the economy, trade and economic development, technology and innovation transfer. We believe that this will facilitate long-term stability and security in the region. After taking into account all the opinions and proposals, the final result in the form of a renewed strategy will be discussed at the ministerial meeting of the European Union. It is expected that the presentation of the strategy will take place in Astana this autumn. Around 45% of Kazakhstan's population lives in the rural areas and provides for its livelihood through agriculture and farming. In the recent years, the government invested 500 billion tenge in the financial revival of the agro-industrial sector. Our next story is on how the comprehensive support of entrepreneurship is being realized in Kazakhstan. Today, more than 850 million people in the world are hungry or malnourished. What's more, around 70% of these people are residents of rural areas. Specialists of the Food and Agriculture Organization of the UN are proposing to improve the infrastructure in rural areas and invest into agro-entrepreneurship in order to resolve this problem. The main cause of hunger today is not lack of food is inadequate access to food. 
people who do not have the money to buy or the means to produce by themselves. In Kazakhstan, the issue of development of rural entrepreneurship is being approached in a comprehensive manner. A fund for financial support of agriculture has been called upon to raise the financial solvency of the rural population. Its main area is microcredit loans and entrepreneurial education of the residents of rural areas. Our loans have already become quite popular in the rural areas. Already 25,000 borrowers have taken advantage of this opportunity and we've provided over 120 billion tenge in financial support. We finance practically all the spheres of life in the rural areas. This year, the Fund for Financial Support of Agriculture and the National Chamber of Entrepreneurs have signed a memorandum on cooperation. The main aim of this agreement is to provide access to the financial instruments of the fund, make them more popular among rural entrepreneurs. Specialists at the National Chamber of Entrepreneurs will offer consultations to farmers, not only regarding issues of credit loans, but also state support. We have regional subsidiaries, regional chambers of entrepreneurs. In each district center, in 188 districts, we have district subsidiary chambers, and entrepreneurs can get consultations at each one of them, regardless of whether it's regional or district. According to the experts of the Food and Agriculture Organization, for the stable development of agricultural entrepreneurship, it is necessary to devote attention to small family farms, as they are in the main suppliers of agricultural products. Household farms in Kazakhstan produce 90% of the total production of milk and 49% of all vegetables. Accessible loans, state support, advantages financing programs, all this together will allow to take Kazakhstan's rural entrepreneurship to a new level. These measures will not only ensure food security of the country, but can have a powerful impact on the economic development. Kyrgyzstan is getting ready for elections and intends to implement biometric technologies. The aim of this novelty is to make elections as honest and transparent as possible. The country's citizens will give not only fingerprints, but will also be identified through retina scanning. Our correspondent in Bishkek will tell us how all this is going to happen in practice. The campaign for collecting biometric data began in Kyrgyzstan exactly one year ago. This is being done with the aim of modernizing the state registration system. In order to exclude the possibility of any corruption schemes in the system of population documentation, in order to strengthen national security. It is expected that biometric methods will not only change the model of the electoral system in Kyrgyzstan, but will also serve in the battle with criminal activity. However, some activists believe that these procedures may violate the rights of voters. In spring of this year, some changes were introduced into the law on the election of the president and deputies of Jagor Kukinesha. For example, one of the provisions states that only citizens who have gone through biometric registration have the right to vote. Collection of biometric data was coordinated with the election period, and even a law was adopted. A person who does not submit biometric data cannot vote in elections. Over the year, the registration service collected information of more than 2.5 million citizens. This information includes an electronic signature, a photograph, and fingerprints. By the way, the president of Kyrgyzstan, Almazbek Atambayev, also submitted his biometric data. Hundreds of special points were established in Kyrgyzstan for the collection of identification data. More than 4 million US dollars have already been spent on this campaign. Overall, it is planned to collect data on 4 million citizens of Kyrgyzstan. Today, 100 countries of the world use biometric passports. Many of these countries do not let non-holders of such passports onto their territories. That is why one can say that Kyrgyzstan is following the path of the rest of the civilization, a path along which great importance is attached to the role of modern identification technologies.
During the days of celebration of the Day of Astana, the capital city of Kazakhstan became a common experimental platform for the most diverse types of events. For example, the boulevard Nur Lejol became a sort of an art arena, and the complex Atamiken turned into a huge civil registry office under the open sky. The echo of Festive Astana still resonates on the summer city streets and in our Central Asian Kaleidoscope stories. It was the first time the Astana Art Fest was held in Astana. The Boulevard Nolajol became a platform for futuristic art projects, designs, architecture and technologies. The aim of the festival is to reflect the main idea of the International Expo 2017 exhibition, Future Energy. The territory of the Astana Art Fest was divided into special thematic zones. Fire energy, water energy and air energy. By using one's corporal senses, it was possible to learn about energy of the future, to see, hear, feel, and even participate in various performances. A Spanish group LUMO performed with a lecture interactive art. This is a group of friends, artists, and experts in the field of media art. Their projects combine architecture, electronics, industrial design, and computer graphics. We were just at two performances of two Spanish designers who combine technology and art. This is a Tetris the size of a building, and also things like this, which allow to reach such depths and experience unbelievable sensations. We really like the organization, the atmosphere, and this opportunity to communicate with the artists themselves and their art. Also at the festival, at the pavilion organized by the Center for Commercialization of Technologies, projects of Kazakhstani scientists and developers were presented. Special attention of the visitors was drawn to the 3D printer. We are presenting the Plus i3 printer that we made. This printer, in terms of its price, quality, correlation, is one of the best models. The Astana Art Fest, despite the unpredictable Astana weather, was able to attract a lot of attention from the city's residents and guests. And that means that the aim of telling about the Expo exhibition by using the language of contemporary art was achieved. Annually, newlywed couples whose registration day coincided with the day of Astana celebrate the beginning of a new family in a special way. This year, 30 happy couples entered the new stage of their life during the capital city celebrations. This beautiful tradition is already eight years old. All young newlyweds specifically chose that their wedding date would coincide with the day of Astana. The couples in our city know that the city's mayor's office especially prepares for this event. Of course, it is their own wish to take part in this beautiful matrimonial ceremony. For the day of Astana, the city's Akhimat prepared many surprises for the newlyweds. Aside from the beautiful ceremony under the open sky, famous people of the city personally congratulated the young families, and they were also granted a photo and a video shoot. The second part of the event will be held in the Duman Hotel in the Aigirim restaurant, where the festive cake will be cut and a lottery will be drawn with prizes such as a trip to Turkey, to Borabai, or something from household appliances. Among the happy newlyweds are Javlandek and Suraya, Kazakhstani Uzbeks from the South Kazakhstan region. Javlandek has been living in Astana for already 10 years and works at the Ministry of Economy. Soraya graduated from university, she's a teacher. They are minister meeting with a smile. The way we met was very interesting. We met in the mega center in the southern city of Kazakhstan six years ago. When I saw her, I thought that this was probably love. And today our wedding is taking place on the day of Astana. This is a great happiness and joy. Having started their family on the day of the capital city, Jablanbek and Suraya intend to associate the rest of their lives with it. They are building bold future plans because they are confident that with such a start to their future family life, everything will turn out great. You are watching the Central Asian Report. Until next time on Kazakh TV.